Hey everybody, Sarah Marie Thompson here from wildandcreative.com, and this is another Wild and Creative Masterclass, fun ways to increase your personal power and everyday magic. And today my guest is Livy Hess. She's a freedom lifestyle business success coach and world traveler and fellow creative. <laughs> it goes on and on and on, so welcome Livy. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited to have you on. I feel like we have lots in common, and I feel like we both have a lot in common with the people that will be watching. So I feel like they're going to get a lot of really cool, um, amazing tips out of our conversation. So I'd love, yeah. I'd love to, um, to just start with you being able to share kind of your journey, like where you are at now, where you've come from, all of that, so that we get like a really good idea of like who you are. Yeah, for sure. Well, so I would say um, starting from childhood, I was just very artsy. Like I was always the kid sitting there and drawing or maybe sitting there and reading. Um, definitely not doing sports, <laughs> like definitely more on the creative artsy side and started playing piano at the age of five and was very into music. So I did like Royal Conservatory exams up to grade eight for piano and singing and um, was just always like really on the artsy side of things and loved it and did ballet and all that jazz. Um, yeah, so that was like how I grew up. But then um, I also was good at academics. So then I was like, well, I'll just become a doctor or a lawyer because those are the good professions to do, right? And um, so I like tried to go into, um, well, I was intending on going into law school and studying psychology so I could go into law. And then, um, I don't know, one day I just kind of had this epiphany and, and thank God I did, I guess, because I was just like, I don't think I want to be in that rat race. And what am I doing here? Like, I just, I wasn't enjoying it at all. Um, my grades had taken a dive in the first year of university. So it was like a sign that I was just not enjoying myself. And so um, one of my first leaps towards like a more creative and magical life was deciding that I was going to leave that behind, just completely ditch it and um, cut my losses, I guess, and go into interior design school. And um, I actually took like an extra year of high school. Um, I went back to high school for like an extra year to build my portfolio for design school. Oh, awesome. Yeah, which was like, um, I think that was a sign of like, commitment to mm -hmm. my desires because like going back to high school was like the biggest losery thing you could do you know when you've already been to university and um but no it was cool and it was fun and whatever and I built a portfolio and got into design school and was like so stoked about that um but then I don't know things kind of shifted over time and I just realized I think I had a bit of a different vision like um, design is beautiful and important and satisfying, but I think I had a bigger message, I guess, to, to convey. So then I started to get into, we can go into more detail, but basically I'll just do like the summary version now, but like, um, I got really into the idea of living a conscious life. So I discovered holistic health and was like, oh, like you can control your health. Basically you can create your health. You don't need to just go downhill and get old and crusty and keel over basically or like taking prescriptions right like that's right like, yeah <laughs> exactly like chemicalize yourself keep yourself alive um so I love that idea and then from there it was like the idea of conscious living just went bigger and bigger and I discovered um you know freedom lifestyle business that kind of thing of like the business that comes from your passion and and that's location free and i was like oh this is amazing and then discovered the idea of like an abundance mindset and and all that kind of magical stuff and then it all kind of came together because now i wouldn't say i wrote off the interior design stuff i still do a lot of branding and i love doing beautiful visuals and um really i think interior design is about bringing a vision to life right a, a creative mm -hmm. vision and that's totally what i do in a way in my business um, so it's cool how like, even though I thought I was leaving those things behind, everything was for a reason. Um, yeah. and so it all adds up to this cool life that kind of came together now. I love the way that you kept using the word conscious. Um, mm -hmm. I think that is, I don't want to call it a buzzword yet, but it is something that I feel like there are people in the world that are definitely like rising to the occasion and becoming conscious creators. Actually, that's one of my programs, conscious creating. And nice. you know, it really means to me, I don't know if it's the same for you, but to me, it really means not just, um, you know, planning your life in a healthy way or, or making it so that you have the ability to work from home and that kind of thing, but also 
saying to the universe that, you know, you are in control like of your life mm. in every single way. Right. And that's a perfect example. What you mentioned about like health, right? Like be a conscious, healthy person. Right. And it's, it's so funny because so many people health kind of is like something that is secondary to making money or secondary to things. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, if we don't have our health, we don't have us, <laughs> we don't have our life. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So totally. And it really affects like the way you're able to show up as well. Cause at least for me, and I've seen it for many others, like food and the way you care for yourself can really affect like your mood and the way you express yourself and how patient you are and how, you know, in your element you feel. Mm -hmm. So people might think like, Oh, Oh, I'm a creative. I'm an artist. Like I'm not a, like the health is secondary, but in fact, one really sets you up for the other. So it's super important. I remember hearing, um, like years ago, just the idea that like you're everything that you eat obviously is, is who you are. You become what you eat. But if you Mm. think about it in terms of thoughts too, like the food that you eat also is the energy that becomes your thoughts. So for someone who's just eating McDonald's like every day, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, okay. Like there's times where like, I will go to McDonald's like once every two months. I'm like, I'm just like going to go and like get something. And I feel horrible after, (laughs) you know what I mean? (laughs) It's like, or if you can imagine someone that's like eating, unhealthy food every single day like of course it has something to do with their vibration and their thoughts right so totally it must be yeah because that turns into energy and then that's the energy you have to use in your life so here yeah. make, make me feel better and tell me you go to like fast food like like once in a while <laughs> uh, um i do probably more back in the pre-pregnancy days to be honest right. i can definitely say i have not eaten this baby is not built out of mcdonald's so that's very good awesome. <laughs> very healthy good it's a conscious yeah. baby <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but no prior to pregnancy definitely once in a while especially with uh you know like a little bit of a tipsy night or whatever yeah, oh, yeah. Next, uh, next morning yeah. fuel <laughs> yeah exactly. um Tell me about, okay, we talked about the benefits of feeling good, but tell me about how you personally feel like you can like recalibrate yourself to be your best self, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, Well, so let's start with the way that you don't do it (laughs) because I discovered this for myself. So basically what I was trying to do was I, I had learned about all these possibilities of like turning your passion into a business and was like, oh, cool. I totally want to do that. Um, But what I tried to do was like, I wanted to recalibrate my life, I guess you could say. So I was like, what I did was look at the results, like my actual life that I was living and say, and I said, well, I'm unhappy with this life basically. So I'm going to change this life into something else. And what, how I tried to do that was, I call it banging my head against a brick wall, which was basically (laughs) trying all the strategies, trying all the tricks, buying these gimmicky software programs that were supposed to um, help you get traffic or whatever. And, um, and watching all these webinars that were like about really buzzy, like internet marketing techniques and stuff like that. And I think I, I mean, I did learn a lot. Like you do need to know some of that stuff for sure, but it was very much trying to change um, the results rather than going within and changing myself first. So then at some point um, I realized that actually it was when I hired a coach that I knew I, um, I needed to actually work on myself before I could change the results. So like um, T Harv Ecker in the secrets of the millionaire mind book talks about changing the roots to change the fruits. And I love that saying how um, you can't just say, oh, that apple is ugly on that tree. I'm going to change the apple. Like, no, you have to fertilize the tree and like water it, take care of it for a whole season or whatever before like maybe you'll get a good apple next season. Yeah. So it was the same thing like recalibrating, to recalibrate my my life and my results, I really had to work on myself. So um, so what that means? Well, a lot of self-examination to see what I was actually telling myself about myself (laughs) and what's possible for me and um, what I wanted out of life. Those were some of the main kind of examination areas. Where do you, okay. So can you explain to us like the old Livy, like when she was like doing well, like she was like doing her interior design and she like was interested with life. I'm sure you were like feeling like, okay. And then you, you jumped the fence and you made that switch. Like, can you see now like the difference between what made you, the successful you now and what you 
weren't doing then or like you know what I mean like what were the differences there Mm. Well, I think the flipping point, like the switch kind of thing was um, a decision where I had just put myself through enough pain and trying kind of thing. Like I'd been trying for a long time, but I, again, like I was trying in the wrong ways. So it was like a decision that I had just been waiting for for so long. And I guess the fact I said waiting for is totally true. Like I was waiting for something to happen. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that is. Um, I still don't know. (laughs) But I was waiting for something, like some kind of like strike of clarity or some, like I would actually go around at my old job wishing that I would fall down the stairs and break my legs so I could have a week or whatever, like a couple weeks off to work on my business. Yeah. So I was like waiting to have like enough time, um, whatever that means. So like, yeah, I guess I was waiting for those things. And then eventually it just got to a point of like, I can't. I just can't. I'm like, these things are never going to happen. Mm-hmm. I have to make it work. Like I have to make the time and um, make the clarity. And I remember, I think it was, I think I learned it from Marie Forleo that she says clarity comes from action, not thought. And that was just like, Oh, like that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and I finally let that sink in and was like, you know what? I just have to, I guess. So there was the decision, but then the action that came from that decision was actually to, commit to doing something for a set amount of time and so what that was for me was um committing to 60 days of writing on my um holistic health blog and like lifestyle blog at the time and i was just like um the result doesn't matter like i don't know what writing these 60 posts is going to eventuate in like maybe nothing i don't know but i'm just gonna do it and do it out of the habit rather than the result and so i did that And that was what incited the whole shift. And then there's like a whole cascade of awesome things that have happened since then. But it was, I think it was like a leap of faith basically to commit to that, Mm -hmm. do it with no question. Also showing that I was willing to show up without a promise of a result. Mm -hmm. I think that was really big. Um, Like, you know, write 60 posts without somebody saying they were going to pay me for it or something. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. I think that like, especially creative people, and this goes for everybody, but especially creative people, you know, we're interested in so many different things. And then when we kind of like have that idea for this new vision that we want to create, we kind of do wait and we're like, okay, the Mm. universe is going to give us validation that we're on the right path. It's going to like send us this $10,000 client and we'll be like, oh, now I'm a coach. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's like, we wait for that validation. And, um, if you don't change the rhythm, like, and if you don't, um, you know, make the action, like to to get that clarity, things aren't going to change. Right. So yeah, I totally get what you're saying about like, you know, being at your job and like, you know, it's okay. And a lot of people would probably love a job like that. However, you're dying inside and you want that time to work on your own thing. And it's a lot of people are like in those shoes and it's, um, yeah. I mean, if you're listening now, like all we can really say is like, Mm -hmm take a leap, like take, like if you believe in yourself, which I hope you do, like take that leap of faith, right? Because only then in a big shift, are you really going to find that things change? It's kind of like that, that saying, like if you expect, or if you keep doing the same thing, it's what called, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect change, it's called like insanity or something. I mean, I got it wrong. I got it wrong. (laughs) Doing the same thing and expecting different results or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, that's awesome. Okay. So, um, how do you see yourself as an abundance magnet now compared to maybe what your thoughts were like before? Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh. It's such a big change. So, um, before, even though Len, like you kind of like read into this, even though I didn't really say this, but my life was good, you know, like I had a nice condo, like in a nice place and, uh, like other, I other, to work other every people day. would have thought that like you were set, like in a sense, right? Yeah. Like you had, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. And so I had actually shifted from interior design to project management for big construction projects. Okay. And like that could have been a career that I could have done. You know, I could have gotten certified in project, like become a project management professional or whatever the certification is and uh, gone that way and climbed the ladder and whatever. But, um, but then like, like you were saying, I was dying inside. Like it just was not aligned. And, um, yeah, I hated every single day, <laughs> even though I was working with some very nice people. I didn't even happen to be watching. But anyway, so the point is, um, while I was living this good life, I thought 
I was struggling. Like for some reason I was just in this struggle mode and I was very much resisting everything that was going on. So even though I had like a reasonable life going on, um, I was resisting it. I totally didn't want to be there. I was always wanting to be somewhere else. Um, I was always worrying about running out of money mm -hmm. and behaving in certain ways that were very, I know now that you could call it like scarcity mindset type thing, yeah. but um, I thought it was smart money management at the time. So for example, I would walk further to go to like the cheap grocery store um, and like carry all the bags and like, <laughs> yeah. like these bags are so heavy and like just hating life. But like, I thought that that's what you do. You save money to save your 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I saved. Yeah. It says at the bottom of your seat, you saved this much today or whatever. Um, and those, those groceries weren't organic. So it wasn't in line with my values but I was like, well, they're cheaper. So like I was basically just going against my, my intuition and my values to do what I thought was smart or whatever. You're just a living contradiction, like in your own mind. <laughs> yeah, totally. Cause it's like, well, I want my life to improve, but I'm like cutting my own legs off kind of thing by like doing all these behaviors that aren't in alignment. Um, so at one point I think it was um, from some random email newsletter from somebody and it just I just happened to read it and it just said you can decide not to struggle or something very basic like that very simple but very profound and that just like I guess I read it on the right day at the right moment and it was just like boom like it hit me I was like oh I can decide not to struggle so I just kind of like I, I see it as this like 180 shift like I was struggling buying the cheap groceries doing the saving the pennies whatever and I just went like nope and like rotated around to the other side. And even though I was in the exact same reality, I was like looking the other way and like mm -hmm. inviting in the cool stuff, the good stuff, the opportunities, the abundance. And, um, and I just started to focus on that instead and inviting in more of what I wanted. Um, and that really made the shift. And then I've just kind of, you know, gone along that path and that's mm -hmm. made all the difference. How has it been for you? Oh, um, well, I can definitely like think back and to see like around my big changes, what were the things that really changed? And mm. for me, it really was when I've been unhappy with something and I've been waiting for the universe to validate me in some way that I'm doing something right and it hasn't come, you know, I finally had been able to make that switch where I was like, um, okay, like I need to take a part, take a piece out my brain, right? And be like, okay, what are the things that I'm spending so much mental time on mm -hmm. that are dragging me down that are not uh, my values, that are not anything that I'm excited about? Like, what is it that's really even mediocre to the bottom, the bottom of the emotional scale for me? And like, yeah. take that out. And whether that means a physical change in your life or whether that means you stop doing something with your time. But for me, that has been like, the biggest switch over it, like that I can see like looking back. Um, mm, because, love that. Yeah, like if we don't take out those things that are making us unhappy, um, maybe that's like a lack mindset too. Right. And replace it with something that is, or even just be open to like more amazing things coming your way. Like that's a problem if you can't do that. Right. So, I mean, hopefully yeah. it resonates with a lot of people because I think that we all do something. We have to be more aware, but we all do something that we probably could be taking out of our schedule or taking out of our mental time that's dragging us down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And most likely that thing is worrying or something yeah. along those lines. That's whatever yeah. it exactly is. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's an unproductive guilt. Yeah, anxiety, anxiety, guilt, like all, like all of the bottom of the scale stuff because, yeah. But I love that you said, um, you know, you're talking about decide not to struggle because I was actually having a really mm. awesome conversation with someone about a week ago. And it was the conversation that, you know, two people can be in the same room listening to the same person talk or having kind of a similar experience. But, but really each one of those per people are going to take away something different from that conversation and take away a different memory from it. So really yeah. you have the decision to take away what you want from like any situation that you are possibly involved with. And I thought that was just like a really good like confirmation to be like, yeah, like even if we're having a shitty day, like we can really transform it at the end and be like, oh, like that's why. And like just bring that memory with us, right? Instead of like dragging it into the next day or whatever. Yeah, totally. Well, I think that's a big part of, I love how you use the word recalibration because um, I think another way you can recalibrate things and 
I definitely consciously try to do this is like, um, uh, like what meaning are you assigning to things, right? Like mm -hmm. including like an experience of a certain day, like you were saying, or even something in your past, like if you're allowing it to mean something or to me, um, whether it means something about life or about other people or about money or about yourself, like maybe you're even your own identity. Mm -hmm. Um, you can choose to like rewrite that meaning and decide that, I don't know, because you failed that one course in high school, it doesn't mean you're a loser or a stupid. It just means that that wasn't your path and that, that actually that was a sign that did direct you down the path that you were supposed to be on or something, you know, like, yeah, I mean, they're all up to us. Yeah, even for, I know a lot of creatives, like as they get going, they often have like a job or, or even like a career that they're working on to bring in income, but they're working on something else on the side. And like, mm. we've all been there. And I think that that's a really good thing, how you said, like what you choose to put meaning on, because, you know, somebody could be in a career that people would call like their life career, but that person might be like, no, nope, like this is an income maker for me right now. And my career is this, and I'm working on it. Other people, which I have been before, have been like, oh, this isn't my career, and, like, oh, I'm just, like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just think about, it, like, it's so different, right? So it really mm. is how you really set up things in your mind, right? Everything's mental. <laughs> yeah, well, I could definitely say that was the case in my old job when um, I was, like I was saying, I was, like, resisting so hard and everything, and then I, I was able to, like, with some massive effort, like, make at least a little bit of a mental shift about it and was like, no, you know what? Um, and I call this like a queen mindset now. I, like I was like, I'm, I can be a queen about this job, even though I don't like coming here every day. And I have a boss who's like kind of demeaning sometimes. And like, I just don't enjoy this at all. Um, I can see this as like, I can see this job as kind of like um, the boat that's carrying me to where I want to go. You know, like it's right. giving me my current income Definitely. and, yeah. And like, it's taking me there so I can see it as a vehicle. And what helped me was like, just imagining that one day that I would just be like, peace and like walk out and never go back. Um, and so just keeping that vision, but then yeah, being a queen about it and not being like a, a sucky boo about it. That's my so what, what was, <laughs> what was that ending like for that? Like when, when you quit that job and then you became somebody who obviously you became more proud of because you were really being aligned and like living essentially your dream, even if it was the beginning of it and you were moving into it. So what was mm -hmm. that like last transition part? Like, like, did you just like quit one day? <laughs> Well, kind of actually. So yeah. Um, and this is another testament to like doing what's right for your vision, even if it's doesn't seem, you know, it seems completely insane. So, um, I won't go too much into this, but in a nutshell, my job was working for, um, something called the Pan Am games, which is like, um, some people might know the Commonwealth games or like, obviously everyone knows the Olympics. So it's like the Pan Am games is like one level below and it's this big multi-sport games thing with like, um, so there's 41 countries in the Americas, right? North, South, Central Caribbean, 41 countries, like tens of thousands of athletes coming together into this, like basically like the amateur Olympics. And, um, so I was working for that organization um, doing the project management for all the construction of the sports venues. And so that was like a big deal. And um, the event, the Pan Am Games was happening in, I think like three months, two months. Um, so it was in like July or whatever. And I quit my job in May, like two months before the games were happening. And I had been working there for almost like two years. And so that was like crazy like insane for most for the average person so think about like why would you quit that job now like at least see out your work and see yeah. the games happening and everything and it was just not an option for me I was just going and it made no sense but I just did it um so so yeah it was a little bit of a chaotic departure and people were like okay you're leaving now that's weird mm -hmm. um but like it just had to happen so um so yeah that kind of the transition, I wish it would have been a little more, I don't know, smooth or fun or something, but it was chaotic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me about this. I feel like this is a really juicy topic and people can totally relate to this. What did your family and, and close friends say to you at this time? Mm. Well, most, 
Yeah, I guess people were saying like, why would you quit at this time? That's crazy because you have a good job and whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm sure people hear that all the time. Like, oh, you have a good job. You, who would like, why would you give up a job? Yeah. It's so hard to get jobs these days. In the economy, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, but so I think my friends and family knew by that point that I'm not someone that you can control that way. Like, I was just like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So whatever. Um, but I guess one piece of like a safety net was the fact that I had already established my business to the point where it was, it had replaced my corporate income. So at least when friends and family were like, uh, you know, how are you going to survive or whatever, because we were going full-time traveling. um, And, um, like, at least I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm writing for like all these clients, I'm writing books and blogs and reports and stuff like that for all these clients. And, um, and you know, I can support myself. So mm-hmm. I think, cause friends and family, they don't mean to squash your dreams. They you just want you to be safe. safe. Yeah. Yeah. Did you just say the exact same yeah, thing? Yeah. Yeah. Same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just care about you. And so if people are, you know, poo-pooing what you want to be doing, they don't mean it in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Um, or at least most of them don't. Yeah. But, and I mean, friends and family, we all know like parents can be of another generation where, I mean, they have one career the whole life, right? Or that's what they've been taught to do. So now like we're living in a time where people can literally like switch their major career like every decade and it's totally acceptable and it can work for them. And it's almost nice in a sense because you're really experiencing like every part of you um, if you can make it work, right? Which which Mm -hmm. you can, but you just have to have like that mindset to make it work. Um, Which then I want to ask you this. Um, what, like, what, do you have doubts and fears that still pop up for you? Like, although like you're quite established, like in your new career. Mm, Yeah, definitely. Well, I think that the, um, the money stuff is always an ongoing thing. Like there's, it's very easy for old programming to creep in as far as Mm -hmm. money or like what's, um, what's smart or wise or responsible. Responsible is a big kind of buzzword I think that comes up for, creatives and people like us who take the leap because it's like um you're supposed to be responsible you're supposed to be smart about what you're doing in your life and everything like that and um I think responsible doesn't always match up with like your vision and your alignment right like it can but it doesn't look that way from the start (laughs) um yeah so there's definitely doubts sometimes like where well, basically I've learned what to do when those come up and what that is, is to dive back into mindset work and to do that every day. Um, but also if I haven't done it for a while to really dive back in. Mm -hmm. And for me, that looks like, um, really just writing about who I want to be, what I want to do in my life, what I want to see happening and what I want to experience. Um, and not having any reason for that, not justifying it, um, or figuring out how I'm going to do it or anything like that, but just focusing on what I want yeah. and, um, and having the faith that it's possible and that I'll figure it out somehow. Um, but one of the doubts for sure also is like, just about, um, who am I to be doing this? You know, like mm-hmm. that can be a big question. I think that comes up for a lot of us is like, why me? Why am I one of the lucky ones who can pull this off? Right. Um, because I think we're programmed to be guilty about having Mm -hmm. a more fun and maybe a more easy life than other people. So, yeah. What, um, is there a few, if you have had any that you've really worked through in the past, like just like one or two, like specific money block beliefs, like, or patterns that you've kind of come across, like through your whole life, they kind of pop in sometimes, but you, you know, you're aware of them. Right. So I find that a lot of times people have like all the same ones and it's, or they create like the most silly, stupidest ones we ever possibly could imagine, like listening to them. Right. We're like, really? But like, that's huge for them. So I'm just interested to know if, if you have, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Well, um, we kind of touched on this, but one of the big ones was definitely that you have to save in order to make money. Um, and also along with that, that money is limited. So, um, you know, being on a salary kind of thing, you, you're just like, I make this much a year and that's just like your reality, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it was a massive shift to think, actually I can create whatever money I want. And 
along with that is like the belief that money can come to you in many ways. Because when you're again on a salary, it's like there's one way that money yeah. comes to you. Or maybe, you know, you receive a gift now and then or something like that, but there's one main way. So, um, so that was a block to deal with for sure is like seeing or believing that money can come to you from, from many, many places. And oftentimes like places that you can't see, you have no idea what opportunity is coming towards you. And so since I introduced that, that's happened a few times where it's like, wow, like that person just randomly called me and offered me like a $2,000 you know, mini contract to do a project with them. Like what the hell, like completely out of the blue. Like it's pretty magical. Yeah. It's crazy. Like the entrepreneurial life is, can be so empowering. And then you can also kind of like get in like the dark clouds a little bit too, right? Because Mm -hmm. with the ability to create anything that you want and have no income cap and like the sky's the limit, um, there also can be those days where you feel quite in control of your life, right? And those can be like the real, like this this is a roller coaster of like the the entrepreneurial world. And, um, but again, like when you're working at a job that you don't love, like with your salary, like you're essentially you're capping out at a certain amount and whether that is accurate or not, cause it's really not, but you do in a sense, put your self-worth on the amount of money that you're making. Like, and totally. you know, w- whether you get your thousand dollar, like upgrade a year or what have you, it's like, really like, and you can get into autopilot of like, is that me? Like, you know? Yeah. So yeah, the entrepreneurial journey. <laughs> period. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause like, um, I think I, that was one of the big things that just made me get tired of working in a job was the fact that my worth was based on someone else's random judgment, like, right. um, from, you know, reading my resume or, um, or whatever, and just being like, this is how much this person is worth for mm-hmm. our organization. Yeah. And that's just like such a minuscule part of like who you are as a person, you know, like, um, just because someone says you're worth 45k a year or something. Yeah. Like that's just like such a, I just felt like that job was such a tiny expression of like who I really am. So, mm-hmm. and I'm sure a lot of creative people feel that way too. For sure. And I think uh, interestingly enough, a lot of creative people tend to be sensitive as well. Right. In, in mm. different ways, like emotionally sensitive. And, um, from my experience, I found, cause like I, I have really made a point of interviewing like as many creative people as I possibly can, like off, off video and just seeing like what their doubts and their fears really are. And everybody actually has all the same doubts and fears, but I really feel that, um, with coming with a little bit more of like a sensitive, um, soul to most of them, yeah. it's, it's hard for them. A lot of them to really take the leap and take, take that self-worth leap. Right. Um, that's, that's, in a nutshell, really like, you know, what can kind of come with the territory of being like a really creative soul. Right. So yeah, it is tricky. (laughs) Yeah. Well, for me, that piece has really been about self approval, like fiercely approving of myself and just being like, you know, start like with each and every leap that I've done. It was just, um, I guess, even though I didn't maybe know that I had the self approval, I think it was just like, automatic like it was there was no question that I had to do that particular thing at that particular time but then like even if somebody says that's crazy why are you quitting your job blah 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 it's like well I don't know but I trust myself and I approve of this choice for myself and and then then they could say oh but what if this what if that what if this happens right but then you can just say look if that happens I take responsibility Mm -hmm. if I mess up if I you know lose everything whatever that means I take responsibility and that's it. That's the ending point. If you accept responsibility for your choices, then you're free. Like you can do what you want. You don't need someone else's approval. And, um, and that's a really powerful way to manifest what you want as well by taking full responsibility. I think. Awesome. I, Actually, I was just having a conversation with somebody this morning about specifically about control. And I was just okay. talking to them about how I have been waiting on something that's kind of like out of my control and mm. how I just haven't been having like the best experience with it waiting on this. And she's like, 
Well, it seems like everything in your life that you created that you're so proud of and like excited about, it seems like you've had full control in that situation. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so it's interesting. Like when we, we are, when we feel out of control in some way, mm. or like that we have given our control away um, and whatever that means, right. It can really shift our vibration, like around that situation. Right. So I really had to today, like re rejig things around and be like, no, I actually have control in the situation and I have decided to do this, right? Or, or what have you. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting because I think sometimes when you feel like control has been taken away or you've given it away um, or, or it's just like an unforeseen thing where you're just like in a dead end and you're like, oh, crap, yeah. like where am I? Um, you know, sometimes that actually sheds light on something awesome, like something else that you could try. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it sheds light on things that you didn't actually need and that you were putting a needed importance on. Like um, recently I had a thing where a big payment didn't come through from like from myself. So I was paying myself for my yeah. business income and it didn't come through my bank account due to like a stupid error that I actually realized was my fault in the end. But anyway, I was blaming it on everything else. You know, I thought I had lost my control. Um, and so because of that, like some of my systems were shut down because like the payments weren't going through and I was just like freaking out. It was not fun. But in that situation, I realized like, hold on, no, I still have everything that I need to, to make money. Basically. Mm -hmm. Like I have my, um, my PayPal account. I have yeah. my Facebook group. I have my communication platform with my audience. Mm -hmm. And even though this feels hard right now, it helped me realize that like all that other stuff that I'm, you know, that I keep running all the time, it's helpful, but it's not necessary. So yeah. maybe it was just reminding me to go back to basics or something like that. And also to take responsibility for my own mistakes because it was my mistake. <laughs> I, I personally don't know about you, but like I do have like a few different programs, you know, like the sales page program and like different things for my website and just, you know, there are like, I can on a handful of things that I probably yeah. don't need, but I have because at times they are make things more simple, simplified and other nice to have. Although, um, me personally, like I am someone that when things are simplified, like I feel really good. Like mm. <laughs> I was telling someone the other day, I was like, I'd rather pay like $700 for like a program that does everything than have like nine little payments come out of my bank. I was like, I can't stand that. Yeah. <laughs> so when things are simplified and when you do go back to basics, like that's where you really can honestly see like more clarity too, right? Like, is that the same for you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just getting back to like what I'm actually there to do. What are my weekly priorities? And yeah, I can complete them with a very simple setup. And that's something that I love to show clients too, is that like, you don't need like um, a customer relationship management thingy and a landing page thingy and all this stuff to get started. Like, yeah, sure. You can have those eventually. Yeah. But, um, but really you can start with very basic stuff and you don't need a team. You don't need an assistant <laughs> to start with. That's for sure. Well, that's the thing though too, right? Like when you get into like these like 10 programs that, you know, like all of the different opt-ins or all the different ads say that you need and you fall into that kind of category mm -hmm. of again, um, feeling as though you will be more in control if you have those things. Um, it really isn't the case in most situations. Like there always is technically a workaround. Um, I just got a couple more questions for you and then I'll let you go. Cause yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, one is we were just kind of talking about Facebook and things like that. Where have you found that you have really, um, you have really found like your, your best form of connecting with people and doing business online? Mm. Yeah, definitely Facebook for me. Um, so that started out, um, of course, I have a Facebook page. And I always think that's necessary for every business because it's almost like a, it's just another form of your website, really. Right. Um, or like an intro to your website, maybe, and an easy way to find a business, um, whatever that might be. And just to be clear, like, I'm definitely not just talking about teachers, experts, coaches, that kind of thing. Like it definitely includes, um, you know, designers, creatives, artists, um, writers, all that stuff. I think everyone should have a Facebook page. It's kind of like, being somehow, in the phone. sorry, go ahead. It's kind of like being in the phone book. Like if you're not in the yeah. phone book, it's like, are you in business? <laughs> definitely. Yeah, it is like that. Totally. Um, yes. And then, so it started out with Facebook groups and other people's Facebook groups specifically because I didn't have my own yet. Well, I did, but it was tiny. Um, 
And so just sharing like stuff, like inspiring stuff, like what I was reading, what I was learning, um, my own story, because I, um, like I said, I had already built my business to a point where I'd replaced my income, gone traveling full time before I ever decided that like, this was a message I need to share with other people. Yeah. Um, so at that time already, I was like, you know, able to share stories about how I was traveling and, and you know, living a freedom lifestyle and whatever. Um, so as a side note, I think it's important to do something cool for yourself first before you think that you should make Mm -hmm. money with it. You know what I mean? Like there's definitely that faith period where you have to like fund your dreams, get your dreams fired up, do something cool. So then you have something to share with others. But anyway, so Facebook groups. And then from there, um, so at one point I stopped really communicating in other people's Facebook groups. I had built up my own enough. And, um, and then I went to Facebook ads. Um, And so, but that whole thing, whether it was in groups or ads, um, what I was doing was sharing free stuff. So like, um, I remember one of my first ones was like five ways to get momentum in your new business. And it was just ways to like believe in yourself and some first steps to take and stuff like that. And then I would just create tons of these cool free things and just give them away. And, um, that's how I really built, I guess, like the foundation of communication on Facebook. Yeah. So every time that you were communicating with your group or with other groups, it was really, maybe it was the tiniest little bit, but you were always essentially giving value in some way. Yeah, something inspiring, even if it was like, um, like I wasn't, well, maybe I was, I was going to say, I wasn't focused on just giving value to people. I was also focused on expressing what I wanted to say. So even if it was like literally me telling a story about myself, Mm -hmm. um, not giving any tips or anything like that. um, But me telling that story could show someone else how maybe, maybe their path could go, for example, like it might inspire them or, or something. So yeah, I think it, um, it did end up being valuable, but, um, but I think the fact that I wasn't always just like making myself give the best five tips on whatever, Mm -hmm. um, that allowed it to be more authentic because it was more about me expressing what I wanted to share. Yeah, I mean, you really see a lot of different people online kind of doing like this, like 10 ways to do this every day, five ways to do this. And it really just kind of feels like really robotic. Um, Mm. Like, how are you really coming up with like these things every day, like with full inspiration? Like, I don't think so. (laughs) Yeah. So basically, the idea there is to be more of like a personality. Right. Like, just share something that makes you memorable, even if it's something that you're embarrassed about that's a really good thing to share even um things that are weird about you like um I think it's I don't remember who but somebody out there says um your weird is your superpower and I just like that like thinking about yeah what is weird about you what's different about you and and being a personality rather than being an expert necessarily and that's really all about people like really falling into their, not falling into, but really embracing their authenticity, right? Because I mean, for me, I've had the experience before where, you know, probably about, I think it was like three and a half years ago when I moved more into the mentorship role of things. I had a, I had a website and like was doing um, well with social media and all that, but I was moving more into the mentorship role and I got um, a business coach and I did not use my intuition with picking this business coach whatsoever. I can see that now, but she <laughs> really suggested that I take all the creativity out of my website. And it's like, creativity is my life. So I like, I became this like generic sparkly, like person, like on, um, on uh, my website. And I just fell dead inside. It's like, this isn't me. This isn't my resume. I didn't want to share my website with anybody. So I had to like revamp the whole thing. And like, now I just say like, even if you are a VA, and you like love kittens, put kittens like all over your website, like mm-hmm. be that VA that like loves kittens. Cause you're going to attract like the right people that love kittens too. Right. <laughs> yeah, totally. One of the best examples of that is, um, uh, nerdfitness.com, I think is what it is. Okay. And it's like a fitness site, but for quote unquote nerds, like people who <laughs> love food wars or people who love Lego or whatever. And they use like, I'm pretty sure they use Legos to like demonstrate the workouts or something like how random, but yeah. like, it's totally memorable and it's, it totally has, it, they have a huge following. It's talking um, your language. That's the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. They'll use like a, some geeky reference to like explain whatever. Um, about fitness. So yeah, that's quite cool. You can always like make it work. (laughs) 
I've got one last question for you, and I don't know if you've already mentioned mentioned this or not, but um, out of your whole transformation, like over the past, like how many, how long has it been? Like eight years or so, or like like what's been your yeah, question? probably. Well, so I always say there was like five years of like entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. <laughs> when I was just like trying different things, and I did have certain measures of success with other small businesses that I started. Like they always worked, yeah, but I never felt that it was right. So, so yeah, there was probably five years of that. And then the last two years have been successfully actually running this business. And with you saying that, I want to know, cause it was the same for me, like as a creative person, you probably had tried a man, many different things, right. And, and did many different little businesses, um, mm. and had some successes in some and to the outside world or to your family or to friends, it, you appear to be like this willy nilly, like whatever person that's like trying different things. Right. And although, you know, in your heart, that you've had successes, you've made the educated decision to, to try something different because for me, at least it was that I never wanted to look back and say that I hadn't tried that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, people just need to give other people a break, right? Like, I mean, like a lot of people that, you know, or maybe a few people that, you know, might be those type of people that try different things, but I mean, what's better that you try different things and, uh, you know, see if they worked out or just had one career for your whole entire life and never express yourself in other ways. Right. Totally. And you can see those people. Like I, um, a lady at the bank yesterday was helping me with stuff and, uh, she was like very bohemian gypsy. She was wearing all this like stone jewelry and stuff. Um, and you could tell, like, you could just see it in her eyes. Like there was something else that she could have done with her life. I don't know. But yet she's there working at the bank and she's yeah. kind of frumpy and she's like not having a great time, but she's probably in her, in her late fifties. She's probably yeah. resigned to that. But like, you could just see like there's, if, if you have an inkling to break out and do something else, just do it now. Yeah. Cause in 10 years, even if that lady's 55 now in 10 years, if she's 65, she will look back and be like, shit, I was young 10 years ago. Like do yeah. it now. Like, totally. you know, you always look back and say that like, gosh, I look back like five years ago and been like, I could have done this and this, but I mean, I think the time is now for anything. Carpe diem. Um, totally. I never got to the question. So it was about, um, what has been the most helpful activity or thing that you do that, that, or have done that has helped you along the journey? Like if you can kind of just think of one that's like your go-to, like that was the best thing that I ever did. Mm. Well, definitely. Um, this is, sounds cliche, I guess, but hiring a coach was definitely the biggest turning point. Um, not just because of what I learned from that person, but because of the sign of faith that it was for myself. So, mm -hmm. um, like I said, I've been trying all these different things, watching free webinars and whatever for years on end. And that was great. And I guess that needed to happen. But when I said, okay, this is the time and I invested in myself to work with somebody and it was the most money I'd ever invested in a single thing at that time. Yeah. Um, that was just me saying this is happening to mm -hmm. myself and to the yeah. universe. And like, I mean, I don't know if it has to be that for everyone. Like it doesn't, I guess maybe it doesn't have to be a huge financial investment or to work with a mentor, but um, whatever it is, I think it has to be something scary and risky and, and crazy kind of like some kind of jumping off a cliff because yeah. for me, investing money was scary. Um, but that's exactly what I needed to do to say, you know, this is happening now. So that was huge. Um, and then just one other thing would be um, listening to lots of really great personal development books um, and money books, like The Science of Getting Rich was one of the ones I listened to at the beginning on repeat and still listen to. And I already mentioned The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, um, books like that. And just like, um, just learning from the other side, like people who have broken through from whatever their normal life was and have, have gone to that other reality and just listening to those, um, mm -hmm. specifically listening because like you can read them too, but for yeah. some reason, audiobooks for me have been really great. I love audiobooks. I, I mean, I kind of, in the past number of years, I've done like a lot of driving around and I'm just like, mm. 
like it's perfect. Like I would just quickly download something before I had to go like on an hour trip or something like that. And uh, you know, you're kind of like you're learning as you're driving and it's, it's great. I love to have the audiobook, especially what's my favorite one. Um, Tapping into wealth by Margaret Lynn. Okay. I that book. So I have the book, yeah. but I also have the audio. And it's so funny because like you do the tapping, right. And I've been like driving around, <laughs> driving around and like people are like, what's going on. But um, you know, <laughs> you're spending that time anyway. Right. So like why I listen to like the radio or like, your um you know serious radio or whatever when you can be totally reading especially books. like talk radio that's just like instilling fear and like undermining like everything that's good about life you know yeah, absolutely um yeah but you were just saying about what were you just talking about um making a big change or um doing something that really like shakes you up right like that shakes up the the reality and um, mm. you know what you're saying about marie forleo's quote um about clarity doesn't come from um was it clarity doesn't come from it comes from action Clarity? Yeah, it comes from action, not thought. Yeah. Right. Um, so really, like, you have to do something that shakes shakes it up for to, to have that um, realization for yourself that, like, this is what I'm doing. Like, I'm changing. I'm changing the pattern here, right? Like, this is, this is the change that's happening. Um, yeah, it's like a big act of faith. And then I think it causes, like, a quantum leap, basically. Like, you're stepping across a dimension. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it has to come from you. Yeah. And again, back to the very beginning of our um, conversation where like, you know, taking apart or taking away um, negative actions or negative things that you're spending your time on, even mental Mm. time on, like removing it, like, and that will cause not, maybe not a quantum leap, but that causes a leap in itself, right? Like that shifts things and that really shakes things up too. Yeah. Um, And I think a lot of that involves saying no, probably (laughs) and drawing boundaries, even if it upsets other people. Mm-hmm. Because how many things are you doing in your life that are you're aware of your intuitions like this isn't for me, but we're doing it anyway, right? There are some things we need to do, like take out the garbage and all that stuff. But <laughs> if you like, you know, really are very aware of all the things you're doing and the things that make you happy and not happy, you're probably going to end up taking off a lot of things off that list, right? So, mm. um, thank you so much for your time. Um, we were talking. Yeah talk for an hour um it's been super awesome i feel like it's been really real and people can really connect and relate to what we've been talking about like you know careers all this stuff (laughs) definitely for being so yeah i think we touched on some great stuff for like people who are who maybe haven't quite made the leap yet or who are working on it but also for people ready to go to the next level like there's it's never done right there's always more to do or another level of self-awareness or other things to work through, which is exciting. So yeah. um, I think there was a lot of value that we touched on. Which is so don't, awesome. yeah, don't stay sa- stagnant. Keep growing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's never so, done. Um, thank you so much. Okay, where can people find you? Um, what your Facebook group um, is, what's it called again? Yeah, sure. So my business is called Hello Shiny Life. Um, My website is helloshinylife.com. And my group is also called Hello Shiny Life. Um, So it's Hello Shiny Life, colon, Freedom Business Mastermind for entrepreneurs. Um, So, but if you search Hello Shiny Life, everything comes up. So the Facebook page, um, the group, and um, everything that I'm doing. So yeah, great. I look forward to... I look forward to, again, watching you as you, you know, travel around the world again and uh, seeing um, a new part of your family come into the picture. Yeah, thank you. In the next little bit. And um, yeah, no, thank you very much. You're definitely a ins- very inspiring person online. And um, I mean, it's, it's no... Um, it's not a little thing to be able to just say, yeah, this isn't working for me. And I know that I'm made of something more and I'm going to take that leap, right? It's scary, but like you did it and that's awesome. So. <laughs> yeah cool same to you Zara. thanks so much for having me great to be connecting with your community and uh looking forward to more collaboration in the future cool thanks so much bye-bye okay bye